The Senevolg and Starlifter model was first produced as a prototype by Conrad as long ago as 2001 when it appeared at the Baumer exhibition. It has now had some updating and is presented in Senebogan's Green Lion livery. The box sleeve is also new and includes a little bit of information about the real crane. An updated instruction sheet is also supplied and it's now in German and in English, although it still leaves some information out which would be quite useful to anyone who really needs to build the model. The box design is the same and it includes two trays with really quite a lot of parts. And if we start by looking in the bottom tray we've got the main uh, crane body itself. It doesn't have the crawler tracks uh, attached to it, but these are separate pieces which, um, which will be fitted on later. There are quite a lot of small parts which are used to assemble the model, and these come in three separate bags, and these include the pendant bars, the bolts for the boom sections, and various other bits and pieces. Among the other main parts, there is the boom head, which fits at the top. There's the counterweight tray. There's a couple of spools of thread, which are used to reeve the model. The counterweight pieces are supplied, they're all separate and there are two sets of those and another piece is the luffing jib attachment. To operate the model when it's assembled there are a couple of these small keys which just press into the side of the body. The top tray contains a number of boom and jib sections and these are all very well made uh, metal parts. Now unusually the review model did have a couple of issues with parts that weren't quite made correctly but the good news is that these were quickly resolved by Conrad. So let's start the assembly and bear in mind it takes a good few hours to fully erect the model in its biggest configuration. The first job to do is to fold out the stabilizers that are used for the self-erection of the crane and to screw in the pads, which is just a simple screw-in arrangement into each of the beams. With that done the model stands on its own four feet. Next is the reeving of the A-frame and this is probably the hardest part of the assembly. Not that it's difficult but um, it's uh, fiddly and it takes quite a bit of work to get it done. So with that said, let's get on with it. Um, first thing to do is just put the key into the winch drum and get that working. Two of the other winch drums do have thread on them, but not on the main uh, boom winch. So we need to take some thread from the uh, spool. And I find the best way to do this is just perhaps to tape a pen to uh, the cab and put the spool on it so that it unwinds easily as you take the thread off to uh, reeve it through the pulleys. Once you've got the spool set up you can begin to take the thread off and you can see that by pulling the thread the spool just um, neatly unwinds. Uh, you need to pass it under one half of the winch drum and then up and over the pulleys on the top of the A-frame and start the reeving process. The trick here is always to try and keep the thread taut so that it doesn't bounce off the pulleys and you need to follow the reeving diagram very carefully so make sure you read and understand exactly where the thread should go. You can see here at the top of the A-frame a bit of blue tack has been used to keep the pulleys tight together so that the thread doesn't bounce off between them. If you proceed carefully and patiently you can complete the reeving of all the pulleys and you're left with the free end which can then be tied off on the other half of the boom winch. Once you've tied the thread you can snip off the free end to make it a bit neat. And now what you've achieved is one length of thread that runs from the tied off end at the boom winch right the way through the pulleys onto the free spool that you've set up. So the last part of the task is to remove the spool from the temporary arrangement that's been set up, um, let out a little bit of the thread and snip it off and then to tie that loose end onto the half of the boom drum that we started with. And with that the A-frame is all reeved up and you can even use a powered screwdriver if you want to speed up the winding of the winch drum. With the trickiest part done we can do something a bit easier which is to put each of the track frames on. They're just a simple push fit and they clip into place on the main structure of the crane. After that we can load up the main counterweight and the first thing to do is just clip the chains onto the lifting gear. This is the equipment that's used to self-raise the counterweight onto the crane and you just put the chains on and then they just push into place on the back and hang down as if they're used for lifting the counterweight tray and when you've done both of those pieces um, we can put the tray itself on um, we offer that up to the underside and there's a long pin which clips through the counterweight tray into the back of the body 
and when that's done it securely pins the counterweight tray and after that it's simple enough just to load the weights on each side and with that done you've completed the assembly of the counterweight. Let's now pause for a minute and look at some of the different combinations of boom and jib that you can have and you can start off simply with just having a main boom. Um, if you want something a bit longer you can keep the reducer section on the top of the main boom and add parts from the uh, luffing jib on the top and then get effectively one very long boom and the third choice you've got is to fit the luffing jib combination so you replace the boom head and then use the luffing piece and pieces of the luffing jib uh, to give you that combination so you can see this is a very flexible model so to assemble the boom the first thing to do is to put the pulleys into the boom head they are slightly strange large plastic pulleys and you put them onto the axle bars and then clip them into place on the boom head and the configuration should be three at the front and two at the back uh, although in practice it's probably better to put just two on the front because they roll rather more smoothly um, if you've only got two uh, rather than the full complement of three. Joining the boom sections together is just a matter of lining up the holes on adjacent sections and then using plastic pins that are provided to uh, pop them into the holes and when you've clipped all those four in perhaps use a flat headed screwdriver or something just to push them home tightly. A big improvement on this later version of the model is the different pendant bars that are now supplied uh, which are now pinned together in their various lengths and this is a much better and straighter pendant arrangement than existed on the first version of the model. As we've only got the main boom on we can now run the winch line to the hook and that just pulls off the drum. The drum's already got the thread on it. Um, take it up to the boom end, it just passes through the hook and then we can tie it on. I prefer to run it through and then tie it actually onto the top, there's no particular tying on point and then you're reeved and ready. So with the crane rigged it's just a matter of winding like crazy on the boom winch, raising up the boom and then you're all set with the crane rigged in its base configuration of just a main boom. Now we'll add on the luffing jib and assembly of that is just the same procedure with the pinned connections on the pieces and when you're ready you offer it up to the boom head and pin it into place. After that there's only one more piece to add which is another kind of A-frame section and that gets pinned into place too. With all the pieces fixed we have the two moving parts now at the boom head. All that remains now is to fit a number of the pendant lines and they all fit together in the same way. They're pinned together in sections and here we pin one at the top and then run it down to the bottom of the boom where it just pins into place on the main boom itself. And with the luffing jib combination there are six of these pendant lines to fix in all and when you've got those done you can do the next operation which is to reeve up the luffing gear arrangement. Now as you can see I'm doing this in a way which is perhaps a little bit different from what you might expect because I'm doing it up in the air. Um, I'm pulling the two moving parts together and then I actually tie them with string to hold them uh, in position and with that done I'll then carry on and do the reeving. The thread for this is already installed on the luffing drum by Conrad but the instructions are not clear as to where the line goes and in fact it goes over the a small black pulley in the middle of the picture and then it goes up and over the central pulley on the A-frame which has been left free if you follow the reeving instructions accurately and then you go up to the luffing gear arrangement and then it's a matter of carefully reeving the pulleys as before. With the luffing jib reeved the last thing to do is to fix the restraining ropes that prevent the luffing jib being pulled back over the boom these ropes are nicely made and they just clip into place on the boom and jib sections and they're actually improved from the original model because the type of thread used um, actually hangs in a more natural fashion uh, than it did on the original model so you can actually pose it to make it look rather better than the original model. All you need to do then is put the hook back on and you've achieved the luffing jib configuration and if you use all the parts that's around 1.2 meters tall so it's an impressive model. The other option is to have a very long main boom, which is easy and straightforward to build. After all that assembly fun, let's have a look at the detail. The tracks are plastic, uh, but they're pretty good. They look 
uh, quite good in place and the track frames are fine too. The cab is fairly simply detailed but there are metal grab rails on the outside and on the inside there are joysticks and pedals. At the rear the counterweight is pretty good with proper lifting lugs formed in each of the counterweight slabs. Another worthwhile detailed improvement on this version of the model is all of the black pulleys are now metal rather than plastic. Moving to the top of the body it has a good diamond plate textured surface. All of the boom and jib sections are cast well and are nicely painted. At the top of the luffing jib there's a plastic signboard and the hook is much improved on the previous version. It's only got a single pulley but it looks much more detailed. There are a few features we haven't covered along the way so let's do that now. First is the rolling test and the good news is that even though the tracks are plastic uh, they do roll even on the smooth surface which is really very good. Of course the model can rotate well and even with a big boom and jib combination it's uh, perfectly smooth. Another feature is that the operator's cab has two degrees of movement. It can move side to side on a pivoting arrangement and it also tilts up and down so the operator has comfort when working at height. Another great feature of the model really stems from its modularity and the fact that it breaks down into pieces which are small enough to make very good transport loads. So if you've got suitable trucks it's possible to build up quite a display of trucks filled with the various parts of the model and this can look really good if you haven't got the space perhaps to fully erect the crane and have it in a tall configuration. But if trucks are your thing you'd probably need half a dozen to be able to carry the whole crane. Another option is that you can simulate and pose the various stages of erection of the crane including unloading from a truck, um, standing up on its own feet and then self-loading and fitting its own tracks and then backing up and loading the counterweight sections using its lifting jacks. And as another set of options you can show the crane with its boom and jib being assembled ready to be lifted. Overall the improvements made to this model have been well worthwhile and a few more improvements would have been better still. But it's an impressive model and looks great in the green line colour scheme. And all things considered it's certainly recommended. Mm -hmm.